everyone. Uh, just currently in the chalet in Tywin, and I couldn't bother really to video uh, a week at Tywin because you've already seen it countless many times. Doesn't mean it's won't be that the last one ever. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna. I thought I'd do a bit different and do a bit of a cooking show because um, we always, whenever we come on there, we always like buy loads of stuff for comfort. Uh, people that piss out of us, but I don't care. So I thought. Let's do like a little cooking show. So it's Sunday, so I'm gonna make uh, a nice vegan Sunday dinner, and I'm just gonna show you little bits and bobs, and this can just be a nice little long short, if you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. So first of all, uh, I'm making dark for my potatoes because they take uh, an hour and a half to cook in the oven. In there, I've got this is for two people, by the way, 135 ml of uh, double cream. 175 ml of soy milk and two garlic cloves. And you're just going to heat that on a low heat until night like, steaming. Give it a little stir every now and then. I've just peeled the potatoes, so now you're just going to cut them up. Uh, I've got two uh, jacket potatoes I'd use for two people. I'm just going to cut them up uh, finely. I did have like a little thing to put, like a little grate, and you can use it all to cut, cut down finely, but. Uh, I find it's quicker to just do it this way because I lost it when we moved out. That's one potato all chopped up nice and finely. Then once they're chopped you want to do a layer of potatoes, sprinkling of salt and pepper, then put a bit of the creamy milk mixture over. And then repeat process until you've run out of potatoes basically. So you should have something that looks like that. And then you want to throw it in the oven on 160 degrees for a fan oven for an hour and a half. Here we have it. Peeled and chopped uh, potatoes for roasters. We're gonna four each. I know some people do this, but not everybody. Like I always boil the water in the kettle and just shove it in that. So it's basically boiled by the time it gets into that. It's a great idea. Then once your water's boiling, uh, turn down a little bit for a second. And then chuck your uh, potatoes in. Leave them to parboil for about uh, ah my little Pringle patch. Ah. Yeah, have a little game. Uh, and then leave it in for to parboil for about eight minutes. So a little bit fluffy. Oh, this is great TV, isn't it? Cheers for watching. We have got on our channel a short of me making a vegan roast potatoes in an air fryer. Uh, so go and have a look if you want. I'm not making them today though because we're in the chalet and I haven't quite got everything I need. And I'm just having my first ever White Claw. Uh, really, really nice. And I really want to know, and I can Google this, so you can let me know in the comments anyway, but I want to Google it. Does this hydrate you? Because it's just water and vodka, so I'm assuming this would hydrate you and wouldn't get a hangover? I don't know. I've just drained them. So I'm just going to smash them around. I'm just going to leave them there to steam off a little bit for about 10-15 minutes. Now I'm just going to chop up my potatoes for my mash because when we have a roast we like three types of air potato. Dauphinois, roasters and mash. Not, not chips though, that'd be a bit weird. But maybe uh, old Bradwood because uh, when I was a child I really fucking loved beige food and now I'm um, Grown up a little bit, I suppose. And I just chuck them in the water. That's the way to boil them and get it all ready to come out all at the same time. Pop the lid on. Yeah, I'm gonna boil the potatoes when it is ready to put them on properly. Boil them, boiling, boiling them for 20 minutes. Um, not 20 minutes from when you first turn it on because obviously it's not boiling. And I say that because not everyone cooks. So they might not know that. Right now I'm gonna put the roast potatoes in the air fryer. I've got some garlic powder with me, so I am gonna throw a bit of garlic over the roasters. I've put the roasters on for half an hour at 180 degrees. The temperature might need to up. I've never used this air fryer before, so I might put it up to 190, and it might take a little bit longer or a little bit less than half an hour, so just judge it by your air fryer, I suppose. And I've also put the uh, Potatoes on to boil as well for the mash. Basically now, whilst the Dauphin is in the oven, 
and their roasters are in the air fryer. Taz, on the boil. 20 minutes again. Uh, this is where I set a fennel up. So I'm just setting my veg up. Uh, yes, I use tin carrots and tin marifat peas. People say to me, you've got to have fresh veg. Why? Because I understand that, but do you make your pudding from scratch? No. So that's not fresh. So which one is it? So I would rather, I'm not so bothered about veg, so I'll use tin veg because I can't be able to put any effort in that, but I'll always put effort in and make my own pudding. But today I'm not making a pudding. So the uh, chicken I'm going to use is a vegetarian butcher. About 20 minutes at 180. The air oil's really nice. And again, like the carrots, and I'm going to put the marifat peas, I'm going to shove them in as well. I really love marifat peas because obviously it's like mush peas, I really love mush peas. Garden peas can just, I don't know, it's just something about them. So I prefer to have them in my cottage pie, which I am making next. And this is going to be kind of like a little three part series of cooking with bread. So I'm doing my roast for dinner. I'm going to do my cottage pie, which is uh, episode two. And then episode three will be my, I'm going to make Alfredo fettuccine. First ever time making that. And my Lawrence favorite food for dinner is usually pasta. Although I have moved on from the old phase of having pasta and cheese. My mom, my mom and dad and all that, they would make uh, spaghetti bolognese. So me and Jamie we were the fussy ones. Uh, we're not as fussy now. Uh, our version would be spaghetti and cheese and Lauren fucking loves that. So every now and then we like to have a little bit of a kid's dinner, but yeah. Alfredo Pettuccini, join us. Younger me would be looking at that and thinking, I am gonna throw it up. I'd literally be thinking, what have I done? What have I done? Does anyone else do this? Like when they're like, move, like moving their food around and stuff. I just touch it with my bare hands. I can never be asked to get the uh, utensils out because it's just another job I can't be asked to do. I'm just gonna throw a bit more garlic on so it's a little bit more even. And because I really fucking love garlic. So yeah, give it a turn uh, every 10 minutes or so. So it's nice and crispy on, on all the sides. Dinner time for the biscuit boy. Not quite a Sunday roast, but he still bloody loves it. <laughs> Big pizza's that. I have got my own uh, Yorkshire puddings. Made these uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'll make them in bulk and then I freeze them. This is the best recipe. Um, I don't know if this actually is on my channel. Well, I have a look, it might be, I don't know, but if it isn't, maybe I should do one. Let us know if you do want to know how to make vegan Yorkshire puddings, because these are really nice. I've just thrown them in the oven with the chicken and daffin moire, and I'm just going to leave them in there for about seven minutes, and then it'll all be coming together now, the dinner will. The veggies on the heat now. The are done, so I'm just going to uh, take them off the boil. Drain them. Now it's time to mash them. Uh, this is kind of hard to tell how much to put in because it's just always by guess. So I'm just going to throw a bit of soy milk in. Yep. Throw a load of butter in. I used to like uh, before I turned vegan having a raw egg in the mash. That was so, so nice. Deb used to do that. Oh, best mash I've ever tried. Now mash it. I think I may have put a little bit too much soy milk in. It's a little bit wet, but it still tastes nice. Bit of mash. Pop the kettle on for the gravy. And the gravy I'm going to use for chicken gravy granules. Tesco. Kettle's boiled. So, going to make the gravy. Now it's time to dish up because everything's ready. A little bit of mash. Oh, it's quite a bit of mash actually. I find mash is always really hard to judge with two people. Roasters! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, there's uh, no camera angles on this. So I'm just putting on the Yorkies. Uh, chicken. Again, no utensils needed for picking up stuff. Yeah, uh, what's left? Dolphin moi. The thing that makes, turns a roast into a bit of a fucking really good roast. Gives half of that each, because, again, it's, oh, we both really, really love it. Oh! Yeah, I need to touch. 
out of gloves. This kit, there's nothing left. He keeps coming back for scraps from his bowl because I think he thinks his bowl magics food. Yeah, so we may not go anywhere really when we're in Tyrone, and it, I suppose some people it can be boring viewing, but again, we do it for us. But we might, we might not go as far, but I really always like to make sure we're well fed on this kind of stuff. So this is like our version of going out, maybe, I don't know. I'm just blabbing now. And then put the veg on. I actually quite enjoy the veg now. It's nice to just think I'm not just eating it because I've got to. I actually do enjoy having it. I do miss, wish we had parsnips because parsnips is one of my favourite veggies. I've always eaten carrots. That's probably the only veg that's stuck by me through my life. And then the gravy. There we have it. A nice Sunday roast at the chalet. It's bloody lovely. <laughs> Join me uh, for the next uh, cooking with Brad and it will be the cottage pie <laughs> or the Fredicino Alfredo's. Fredicino. <laughs> what about them? I can't remember what I said next. But yeah. Uh, thanks for watching as well. <laughs> Sorry if it's been boring viewing, but clutching straws now. <laughs> There's no more gigs to sleep token. I'm, I'm uh, waffling on. I'll see you later. <laughs>